everyone. So this is the GCMS, and this is what the screen should look like. It shouldn't be turned off when you first enter the room, but this is what the screen should look like when you first try and use the instrument. It should say idle, and everything should have numbers and stuff. First thing you want to do is pick a method to run your sequence. So you go down to method up here, and you say load method. And on this screen, you can pick which method you want to use, or you can make a new one. For us, it would be under Chem 413, Spring 2013. You click that, and then under any of these, you can just click the folder and say... Under each folder, there should be a method loaded, or you can make your own, but that, just click OK if there is one. Okay, and it should stay ready, and right now it's loading the method. And so up here you can see the method has been loaded. So the next thing you want to do is to edit your method. So you go on to method, edit entire method, and just click OK. And here you can make a comment for what your method is doing. Um, otherwise, just click OK. And just click OK again. Here you can see the what the instrument is doing for everything, such as the incubation temperature, um, incubation time, syringe temperature, stuff like that, the run time, just to make sure you know you have selected the right method. You press OK. So now you can see the different temperatures and how how much they're going to go up at what intervals. So this is the ramp and this number is the interval at which the temperature will be ramped up. This is the minimum value and this will be the maximum value. So here's where you can change your temperature settings. And usually we just click OK through this screen as well. And just click OK. And here you can change the solvent delay, but usually we just leave it at zero. So say OK, and OK, and OK. And just make sure your method is saved at the same, in the same area that you'd want it to be saved in. Usually it's under the same name. So just click OK. okay. So the next thing you want to do is to edit your sequence. And that means to uh, to label which which numbers your samples are in according to the number that, of the tray that they're in. So you go to sequence, and you can either load a previous sequence or you can edit your sequence. And here is the sequence screen. So make sure all of these say sample, or else they're not going to be run. And these are the vial numbers, um, and the numbers are up on the tray. Usually it will be in tray 2. So you can see that there's numbers corresponding to each vial. Okay, so under the sample, you can say you can change the sample name and just make sure the method is the same for all of them. And you want the quant report to be default. So after that, you click okay. So the other thing you want to do is load the sequence before you edit, if you are starting from a, a previously saved sequence, otherwise you can make your new sequence. But if you are going to load a sequence from before, you go to sequence, load sequence, and you want to just pick the one under the Chem 413 <coughs> folder, and the sequence will be saved under .s, it will be a folder not a folder, but it will be a file saved as .s file. So you click that, and then it's loaded. So the next thing you want to do is make sure that this sequence is what, you, is what you want it to be. So that's when you go to edit sequence and make sure the tray number and the vial numbers and the, the names for them are all correct. So from here, you just say sequence 
run sequence and just make sure everything looks good. It's under the it's under the folder that you want it to be. It's under the right it's saved under the right folder. And if not you can change it. Otherwise you say full method and inject anyways and you say run sequence. And then and the instrument will make a noise and the needle will start to move. 